Hey guys, so today we're talking, um, we're going to finish up talking about cell recognition and the function of the various different molecules inside the cell membrane, and then we're going to talk about passive transport. So carbohydrate chains on the cell membrane play a big role in cell-to-cell -cell recognition. They recognize each other by binding to the surface molecules that often contain carbohydrates on the extra surface extracellular surface of the plasma membrane, so the outside of the cell. Membrane carbohydrates can be covalently bonded to lipids, which make glycolipids, but more commonly, they're bonded to those proteins making glycoproteins. Carbohydrates on the outside of the cell membrane vary among species, among individuals of the same species, and among cells of the individual. The placement of each carbohydrate is typically very unique to cells within the body, unique to individuals within a species and, in, and between different species. <clears throat> so the membrane is synthesized by organelles inside the cell primarily the Golgi apparatus and the endoplasmic reticulum. They create an asymmetrical distribution of proteins and lipids and the associated carbohydrates in the plasma membrane to give each membrane a very specific side. Each membrane is given an, exter, an external side and an internal side, an extracellular side and an intracellular side. That helps identify the inside and outside. And as the cell has to go through cell division, the ER, endoplasmic reticulum, and the Golgi apparatus um, create more of the lipids and proteins that have to go into the cell. So those proteins and lipids made by the endoplasmic reticulum passed off to the Golgi apparatus. Some get attached to, while others get released. Plasma membranes are selectively permeable. A cell must exchange its materials with its surroundings in a process that is highly controlled by the plasma membrane. The plasma membrane is selectively permeable, which allows some things to pass through while regulating other things to, that cannot pass through. Typically, hydrophobic or nonpolar molecules have the ability to pass through the membrane relatively easily. They can dissolve through and into the lipid bilayer and then pass through the other side. Where polar molecules and large molecules like sugars cannot cross easily and need assistance to cross the membrane. Transport proteins allow the passage of hydrophilic substances across the membrane. Some of these and transport proteins are called protein channels, and they are specific to the type of ion or molecule that can pass through it. They have a hydrophilic channel on the inside with certain molecules or ions that then use it as a tunnel to get in and out of the cell. Channel proteins called aquaporins facilitate the passage of only water through their protein. Other proteins are called carrier proteins and they bind to the molecule to change shape in order to shuttle that molecule across the membrane. These are typically very specific for the substance that it is, that it is trying to move. Passive transport is also called diffusion. This is the movement of molecules with no energy investment. Diffusion is the tendency for molecules to spread out evenly amongst the available space. Although each molecule moves randomly, diffusion of a population of molecules can be directional. At dynamic equilibrium, as many molecules will cross the membrane into the cell that will cross out of the cell. So here we have diffusion of just dye molecules in a semi-permeable membrane. 
And the net diffusion is going to move until the same amount of molecules are on both sides of the membrane. This is high concentration. This would be low concentration. So we're moving from high concentration to low concentration until we each reach equilibrium. Visually with two different dyes, the same thing is happening. Our purple dyes are gonna move one way and our orange dyes are gonna move the other until there is the same amount of both dyes on both sides of the membrane. Substances will diffuse down their concentration gradient, the region along which the density of a chemical increases or decreases. Since this is diffusion and no energy input is put in by the cell, passive transport moves from areas of high concentration to an area of low concentration. You can think of passive transport as when you're sitting on the couch, you're not doing anything, you're passively sitting there, you're not expending any energy. And that's the same thing with passive transport to go from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration, there is no energy being put in by the cell. Osmosis is the diffusion of water across a membrane in the same exact way, except water uses that aquaporin to move itself across the membrane. Water will diffuse across the membrane from an area of low solute concentration or high water concentration to an area of lower water concentration or higher solute concentration until the solute concentration is equal on both sides. This makes more sense with a visual. Here, we can see we have a low concentration of a sugar water because there is less water over here, or there's less solute and more water over here. We have a semi-permeable membrane. And then we have a lot of sugar water over here. There's a lot of sugar in that same amount of water. Sugar cannot diffuse across a semi-permeable membrane, but water can. So we see that our water level changes reducing water here, but increasing water here. Now we have the same concentration of water to sugar ratio. Water balance is extremely important for cells that do not have cell walls. We have three main types of solutions that a water, a cell can be in, in relation to water. The isotonic solution is a solution concentration that is the same outside and inside of the cell, meaning that there is no gain of water because as water moves in, water moves out. A hypertonic solution means that the solute concentration is greater outside of the cell than it is inside of the cell. In the water, the cell loses water. In a hypotonic solution, the solute concentration is greater inside of the cell and therefore the cell gains water. This is easiest to see with red blood cells. So our red blood cells should always be in this donut shape where it has a little sac to hold onto oxygen as it carries oxygen to cells and then carbon dioxide as it carries it away from cells. In a hypotonic solution, water is going into the cell, which inevitably, inevitably leaves our cell to burst or to lice. In a hypertonic solution, the water is leaving the cell and therefore the cell shrivels. In plant cells, plants actually would prefer to be in a hypotonic solution. That puts them in turgid, which is very normal, giving them turgor pressure. Isotonic solutions leave cells flaccid, which is why plant, which is when plants start to wilt. And then a hypertonic solution is completely deadly to plants and they very rarely can bounce back from it. Hyper or hypotonic solutions create osmosis problems for organisms. This leads an adaptation called osmoregulation, which is the control of a solute concentration and water balance and is necessary for the adaptation of life in such environments. Paramecians have a hard time surviving in the pond in which they live in because they would 
suck in too much water. So they have created some type of a vacuole that acts as a pump to rid the cell of excess water. So that would be that vacuole right there. Cell walls do help maintain water balance. A plant cell in a, hyper, a hypotonic solution swells into its turgor pressure where it wants to be. If the surroundings are isotonic, it becomes flaccid and may wilt. And then if the environment gets too dry, the cell will lose all of its water and the membrane will pull away from the cell wall, which is usually lethal. Facilitated diffusion is diffusion with the use of transport proteins. These speed up the passive movement of molecules across the cell membrane. Channel proteins provide corridors or hallways that allow specific molecules or ions to cross the membrane. Aquaphorins are for water and ion channels are very specific to the ions in which they diffuse. Um, and they open and close in response to a stimulus that's called a gated channel. So here is our protein channel. It's just an open doorway for this solute to move in and out. This would be our protein carrier or carrier protein where it comes in and this binding effect causes it to change shape and let the solute in and then it would work in reverse for those to leave. Carrier proteins do undergo subtle changes that translocate the solute binding site across the membrane, allowing that solute to then leave. Deficiencies in your transport proteins can be found in certain types of kidney disease and many other diseases where solutes are not able to get across those specific membranes.